Hello everyone and welcome to Cold Outreach Success Stories where we interview regular business people just like you who've had a lot of success with Cold Outreach on email and other channels. We go deep into their process with hot tips around targeting, messaging and personalization so that you can take away some tips to implement in your Cold Outreach starting tomorrow. Okay. Today we have Sampat from SaaS Mantra. Welcome to the show Sampat. Yeah, thank you Saro. Thanks for having me here. So it's a pleasure to be uh, on your show. So um just a quick introduction. I am one of the co-founders of SaaS Mentor, where we help uh, with SaaS companies to get the product discovered and distributed. Just a quick intro. I want to keep it short. Awesome. Let's get right into it then. Uh, in terms of your cold outreach, how do you find new customers? How do you find new clients? Right. Uh, great question. So uh, at SaaS Mentor, we believe like uh, we want to do like cold outreach, not just like spam out people, because that's exactly where. Uh, your conversion could get hit big time, right? So uh, the way we do it is uh, we follow a system where we want to identify whether the SaaS products that we want to team up with, we want to uh, partner up with, has a perfect solution and there's a problem and there's a market exists for that. So unless and until that happens, like we wouldn't be like uh, able to uh, deliver the on-premises. So we would we would want to partner up with those SaaS companies where they may have a wonderful product, but then if we are not having that kind of audience, where there could be like a proper matchmaking, we would be like reaching out to them. So we have like a couple of people who prior a primary job is to uh, do all this research, and then we basically generate leads, and then we have a section where and we have a, a system where we want to segment and identify, make sure like we are going to be reaching out to the leads who are highly targeted. So that is the reason that we are get like over 60 to 70% responses for oh, all the emails that we are sending out. That's amazing, 60 to 70%. Okay, so let's dive deeper into that then. So what kind of SaaS companies do you work with and what databases, what tools do you use to find out their data? Like these are the people, companies I want to work with and what is that? Um, you know, process. what does that process look like? Yeah, for sure. Happy to dive deep. The companies that we partner up with, the SaaS companies, uh, we want them to be like uh, primarily targeted towards like SMB businesses mm-hmm. for a start. Like uh, if the SaaS product is built for like something very micro niche, for example, say CRM for lawyers, CRM system for uh, restaurant owners. So mm-hmm. products like these is not something that our ideal target audience. So uh, I'll probably put down like list of eliminators that we have so it becomes easier and then we can dive deep into the directories we search for and the uh, crawling process and saving process and so on so uh, we uh, at SAS Minister, we believe it's super important to have the list of things not to do so that uh, anything else that you're going to do is basically going to be like much more easier right. so and and when you i mean psychologically for humans like for us so when you have like list of things not to do it's easier for you to uh, remember, even if you're going to be like away from sometime at 2 a.m. in the morning, you can still easily remember that instead of like things to do. So things to do usually add like a bit of stress and then you have to be like, super careful about that. Right. Not to do is like, okay, okay, this is a thing. This is a roadblock. I don't have to do that. So uh, that's what we have. So things not to do is like, don't go for anything like micro niche. Uh, don't go for anything that's focused on B2C and don't go for anything that's focused on a problem that, that doesn't have a bigger market. Mm-hmm. So. And these things are like big no. So that's how our, the process begins. And then when we uh, start using the product, I mean, we, usually this is something we do. Like most of the times when you're starting to do like code outreach, we just get the list of emails. We start spamming out everyone. I mean, I don't mean to use the word spam, but then that's literally yeah. what we do. Anyway. It, is, it is, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what we do instead is like, we wanted to try and use a SaaS product mm-hmm. to see how easy it is to get started with it and whether it solves a purpose and that purpose is something that we can directly relate to. And it should be like very, very easy. Like SaaS is ideally for us to plug and play, right? If the product is like plug and play or does it require like a lot of uh, process to go through even for me to get started with, uh, can I get started with it like now? And can I have the implementation done within like next half an hour, one hour or within today? And can I start seeing results within a week? So if that is doable, then that's like a really good SaaS that we want to reach out and partner with. Mm-hmm. So what we do uh, at SaaS, is it okay to uh, talk a bit about like what we do? Sure. sure. Yeah, perfect. So what we do at SaaS Minister is like, we want to identify these products because we have uh, hundreds of thousands of customers at SaaS Minister. So we are kind of like Groupon for SaaS products. Mm-hmm. So what we do is like on one end, we have SaaS companies who wants to 
to get the product into the hands of their ideal target users. On the other end, we have like a huge bunch of customers who wants to get access to new SaaS products out there because customers at the end of the day, they are like busy doing their uh, work and yeah. uh, servicing their clients and so on. So they don't have time to do all those research. So we take care of that part. Mm -hmm. So we identify the pain points and we research and identify the pain points of the, our customer base. Mm -hmm. And we identify the SaaS products that are going to be ideal solutions for these customers. Then we kind of start doing like matchmaking. We work out with the SaaS companies, uh, work out an exclusive discount for our customer base, and then we bring them on board on our platform. So this is in a nutshell how the system works for us. So now to make this happen, on one end, our research team, we are going to be constantly identifying like who are our ideal customers. I mean, uh, the customers that we have, what are we often send like surveys and questions to understand uh, what are the common challenges they have. I mean, if, you, if you're going to ask someone uh, out of nowhere, even though they are customers, hey, what problems do you have in your business? They say mm -hmm. like, no, everything is fine. Or they're going to say like, yeah. I want more clients, right? Yeah. So you cannot be shooting questions like that. So you got to have, I mean, even though they are your uh hot audience or like hot leads or like a warm audience because they are already your customers, mm -hmm. you still have to have uh, multiple touch points with them. You need to keep on uh, constantly talk to them to understand their pain points and then their uh, problems, their challenges. You can ask them for like problem. No one would want to admit that they have a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important that we need to ask, like, hey, how, what have you automated this week? Or which part of your business has taken like a lot of time so that you could save some time so that you could get like more clients or what's right. stopping you. So these kind of targeted questions would help us to understand their challenges. So okay. we do that on one end. So let's let's dive deeper into the uh, SaaS uh, side of your business, like getting more SaaS you know companies to list in list on your platform. So when it comes to the database, is there any particular database that you use to identify them, or just do Google searches? Like how do you find which companies are there? Well, there are like several. I mean, uh, to start with, there's like Crunchbase. We use like Crunchbase mm -hmm. big time. So, and then uh, we sometimes uh, go through like Angel.co as well, because Angel.co ideally people use for identifying the job listings, but then we do it the other way. So if a company is like uh, a startup with say, uh, I mean, our ideal SaaS companies are like companies that's been around the market between two to five years. Mm -hmm. So uh, if the product is gonna be like uh, uh, looking out for people to join them, that has like uh, two to five years uh, of existence of the company, then they are like ideal target. So uh, we do scrape them as well. And then we, I mean, um, we have a person who whose full time job is to scrape these okay. uh, uh, companies and products, and they also do the LinkedIn search. Like uh, we do, like LinkedIn search filters, and we do like the condition loops, and then identify like uh, the decision makers of those companies. The other person, at the same time, they'll be like, uh, searching and signing up for these products, trying to see how easy it is based on our uh, to do and not to do list. They see like how easy it is to use the product, so that we can start classifying. Hey. Looks complicated, but really good product, mm -hmm. which has a market okay. and uh, looks nice. So basically we follow the system called like, it, 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 does it, it has to follow something specific called LEHR. So which means like low efforts and high results. Okay. So I don't have to put so much effort to use the product, but then I can expect high results, which means like there is automations in place and that is like uh, easy to start with. I can set up like once and I only have to log into the product once a week or once a month, that's good enough. Kind of like we have those kind of segmentation that's happening at the same time. So that is how right. we classify the products. Okay. So now let's dive deeper into the messaging. What kind of copy do you use? Can you, if you remember some sample, can you just share that as well? Right. So we do like uh, two kind of uh, approaches here. So one is about uh, products that may or may not be like fit or products there. Uh, we, we believe like we could add like really good value, but then we are not 100% sure whether they would need uh, a company like us to partner with. So uh, in those cases, like we do send like uh, mass emails, but then not like all the hundred companies get the same set of emails. We do mm -hmm. like batches, like batches of five emails per company. I mean, uh, per, per audience, like it's going to be like for five leads, they get the same email. And for the next five, so if you're going to reach out to hundred leads, then, we are going to have like 20 different variations. Okay. So, yeah. So this helps you in like so many different ways. One, you won't fall for the uh, Google spam trap. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, no two companies, just in case, say, for example, uh, Sauro, you have a company and then uh, say your friend Ganesh, he is going to have a company. And mm -hmm. both of you are receiving the same email. If you guys are going to have a word, it's going to make it look like, like mm -hmm. spamming them, spamming mm -hmm. you all. 
So we don't want that to happen. So variations are super important. And by right. variations, I don't mean to change just the name and company. It's like mm-hmm. completely different set of emails. And most importantly, we revamp this every single week. Mm-hmm. So it's not like set and forget kind of thing. And for the companies that I told you about, like LEHR, like a low effort and high results, we write customized email like for each and every single one of them. So uh, our business development person, our, our research person, they will make some notes, some remarks. Based on that, we write like a specific email for each and every one of them, including the follow-ups. Interesting. Very interesting. Makes a ton of sense. Okay. On to my final question now. So what are yeah. some of the mistakes that you made when you first started running cold outreach? Oh, there's a plenty. I mean, I, I'm happy to talk about this all day. I can do this all day. So uh, very first one is uh, we did send emails and batches, like I said earlier. So we have been uh, sending out emails. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll try and list them down as far as I could remember. One, not verifying the emails multiple times. Mm. So we usually think that we should verify the emails once and then we can start sending them out. Never do that mistake. You should verify the emails multiple times because first time you may not get like uh, internet like bounce. Sometimes when you do the second check, uh, mm. there's like soft bounce, which means like your reputation is still gonna hurt. And most importantly, when we started doing that, then we also uh, went back and then uh, make sure like we have a like, proper DMARC and then proper uh, SPF, DKM setup. Make sure like all those technical things are taken care of. It may sound super complicated initially, but it's gonna pay off like in, in the long run. And it's not right. that complicated. Right. We understood that, number one. And number two is like try using a subdomain, obviously. Mm-hmm. Don't use your main domain. If possible, get an alternate domain, mm-hmm. right? And of course, like verify emails multiple times. Usually when you're adding it to your CSV sheet, verify it once. And before you schedule the emails, verify it for the second time. So we do that. I mean, we have created a process just for that. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, never ever use the same variations over and over. At least have like four weeks of difference. So mm-hmm. if you're going to send something like on 1st of September, never use the same email for the rest of the September. Use it in October. That's I like see. that could potentially work better. Uh, my personal recommendation is to provide like six weeks of duration, like not just 30 days, but make it like 40 days because Google can still see if the emails are going up monthly. So that will make things complicated for you. So it's, it, the ideal uh, solution is to keep on seeing which of the variation is working perfectly and then come up with like new variations, keeping that as a base. Mm-hmm. And then we have, obviously have like uh, our initial emails, the ones that we have been sending in 2018, 2019. We still see them as references to see which campaigns worked back then. Our today's iterations were based on the data from last three, four years. Mm. So uh, start create, keep on consistently creating like more and more variations. It's going to be like very, very helpful for you. And when you see a product that's going to be like highly uh, targeted product, like, hey, if I'm winning this account, this is going to add like a lot of value for my company, then make sure you put effort to uh, snatch that account. Because mm. unless until you're doing that, expecting, I mean, the, the campaigns are going to be always mediocre and uh, those uh, ideal companies like those are like dream companies we have we call them like dream hundred so those dream hundred companies they have uh, people i mean their decision makers are like super super intelligent and they're super smart they can easily spot a cold email mm. and they can so you have to make sure you're going to personalize all those emails specifically addressing their possible pain point if you can do that then that's going to be winning and last and not uh, I mean, last, not like, it's going to be like the last one, but for us, it is. For this session, it is. So when you're doing that, show them in the email that you can, or uh, you have uh, taken some companies similar to theirs from pain mm. to pleasure. If mm. you can do that, then they are going to be like keen to listen to you. So otherwise, if you're going to say, hey, uh, you know, we are a web design company uh, from so, 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 and we have the services, no one cares. Even if you're going to mention their name and uh, their right. company name, people still don't care. So uh, write it very specifically, tell them like if their social presence is not great, talk to them about it, tell them what they're missing by not having a really good social presence. If their only reputation is not up to the mark, say they don't have like enough G2 Crowd reviews, tell them about it. Tell them the importance of G2 Crowd uh, review, having more reviews and tell them like if you have worked with a client who you have helped scaling the uh, reviews, then talk to them about it, send them a case study, people are interested, especially if you're uh, LEHR clients, if they are like keen to work with you, they are certainly interested in you. Do that effort, it's worth it. So these awesome. are like some people I could think of. Awesome, Sambad. No, this was very helpful. I definitely learned a ton from this uh, from this interaction and I hope our listeners did as well. One final thing for people who want to find you, where, they, where can they find you online? 
Uh, well, we are at sasmantra.com, uh, S-A-S-M-A-N-T-R-E.com. So ideally, uh, mantra basically means like magic. So we are the magic portion for the SaaS companies. And that precisely says like Genie is our, our mascot, Genie is our logo. You can find us there. And if you have any questions, feedback, solutions, I mean, suggestions or uh, tips, anything that you'd like, feel free to drop an email to hello at sasmantra.com. We are super happy to help you. Perfect. Thanks for hopping on, Sampath. Thank you, Saro. Thanks for having this session. So that's all the time we have, folks. Um, I really enjoyed the episode. I hope you did too. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, whatever you can to spread the word out about Cold Outreach Success Stories so more people can enjoy and learn from the show. All right. That's all, folks. Bye-bye.